Hi, and welcome to Material Physics 1. I thought a lot about what would be the useful things to sort of tell you before you went off to university and studied material physics. I don't know why you want to do that, but apparently you do, so who am I to stop you? Uh, and I thought what would be really good is sort of delving down into a few of the fundamental concepts. And so that's what we'll be doing in each of these videos, just taking a little idea and explaining it to you. Most of the maths is a nightmare. It's all something to the power of something, all multiplied by an exponential, which is itself multiple powers. So we're not going to be touching that with a barge pole. But there are some really good ideas that I think if I give them to you now, will make your degrees that much easier. So what is material physics? We just don't know. It's looking inside materials, almost always metal, weirdly, it turns out, and analysing them so that we can do engineering with them. So we're not doing this because it's interesting. We're not doing it because there's some really big ideas about the universe. We're doing it so we can build better bridges. We're doing it so we can build better buzz saws and other machines. It turns out that metals are made of things called crystals. And whenever we see the word crystal in material physics, it just means a repeating structure inside the material. So wherever you've got that, that is a crystal. Now, interestingly, crystals can be huge. My mother, when she make, she works with gamma cameras, which are a sort of medical physics thing that we've talked about, where you uh, ingest something radioactive and then scan the radiation that comes out of you. They grow one single crystal, which will be about two or three meters wide, and then they refract the rays through that crystal. And by growing a very specific crystal, you can get exactly the refraction pattern that you want. So you can just grow crystals in a lab to be as big as you want. And what's cool about one single crystal is pretty much every atom within that will be part of the same crystalline structure. It turns out metals instead have lots and lots of tiny little crystals inside them. So there'll be little lumps where everything's perfect, but then there'll be lots of little bits in between them which won't be. And that is where the problems tend to come in. It's because not every atom is perfectly part of this crystalline structure, but instead you've got pockets of crystalline structure and then bits in between them. So, how does metal go wrong? Well, there are two main ways that metal goes wrong, and they are creep and fatigue. We'll start with creep. Creep is when you put a load on something and then walk away and leave it. So think about a bridge or something hanging from a rope for a long time or something where there's just static pressure for a really long time. And things fail. We all know that they fail over time. The interesting thing is, why? Why does creep happen over time? Well, it turns out if something's outside, one of the main things that contributes to creep is just it heating up and cooling down over and over again because everything sort of expands and shrinks and expands and shrinks. And as you can imagine, every time it does that, there'll be plastic deformation as things move past each other. Imagine all those little crystalline structures moving around each other, deforming the crystals themselves can get bent, and that'll happen over time. But even without that, there are two main types of creep that cause things to fail. The first is called dislocation creep. And this is when the crystals themselves warp. They can warp in all sorts of fun different ways, and it turns out that an awful lot of material physics is putting it all into a computer, applying stresses and seeing what shapes the crystals change into. If you imagine a diagonal structure, um, sort of shaped like a diamond, that could tweak at the top or twist or what have you. So that's your sort of dislocation creep. The other type of creep is called diffusion creep. And this is when there's little spaces in between the individual crystals, and when you apply pressure to them, they will over time reorganize, and they'll move into where there was a little space, and over time they'll all reorganize more and more and more until eventually the whole thing snaps. So that's your diffusion type of creep, where the individual crystals have stayed whole, and then you have dislocation creep, where the crystals themselves have changed. So that's creep. However, if you are doing material physics, you're going to spend a lot more time talking about fatigue. Fatigue is when something is loaded and unloaded repeatedly and eventually breaks. So think about a clothes hook on the wall. You put your coat on it, you take it off, you put your coat on it, eventually hook falls out of the wall. So that's the kind of idea of fatigue. Now it turns out when material physicists talk about fatigue, they're normally talking about high-end engineering machines. So fatigue normally only kicks in 
around 10 to the 4 plus cycles. And anything that gets fatigued at less than that number of cycles is rubbish. In fact, a lot of things go all the way up to 10 to the 8 cycles. But then again, if you imagine some massive machine spinning round and round doing its thing multiple times a second, you don't want the metal inside to break quickly. So, why does fatigue happen? Well, similar things to creep, but on a much sort of greater scale, because as you repeatedly load and unload, any of that sort of dislocation and diffusion is going to be greater. Also, over time, the material just start to crack and splinter. Anywhere where there's a little bit of weakness is going to be exposed by repeatedly loading and unloading and loading and unloading. There is actually, it turns out, something called a fatigue limit, which is for any given material, there is a level of stress underneath which, theoretically, you could keep loading and unloading and it would never ever break. So weirdly, most limits are defined as a higher end, but fatigue limit is defined as a lower end, which I found kind of neat. Titanium apparently has some of the highest theoretical fatigue limits. So apparently titanium is the thing that if you just want to load and unload forever, you can go as long as you like. So there you go. Introduction to some of the ideas of the material physics. We'll have some more tomorrow. Have a good one. See you then.